Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Tuesday Traces. The purpose of this webinar is to show how the V1 pressure mat powered by body track is used. Tonight, we are not only going to analyze some pretty special traces, but we're going to have Jake Thurm teach the teacher. Uh, welcome to all the folks that have registered and have joined us via the Zoom webinar, and welcome to all the folks tuning in to the V1 Sports Facebook Live channel. The recording of tonight's webinar will be available on our V1 Sports YouTube channel in a few days. Everyone will ask me. We will email it to you if you're registered, and it will be posted on the YouTube channel for in a few days after um, Anna edits the uh, recording. We love answering questions throughout the evening. So if you're on Facebook, put them in the chat window. If you're in Zoom, put them in the chat window there and the team will feed them to us. Feel free to interrupt, feel free to ask anything. Um, you have quite a fun group tonight. A little something interesting about V1 Sports, our CEO, Brian Finnerty, was a former professional soccer player. And Uncle Gary Palace, that started our company in 1995 is still here working with us today. V1 Sports is a 25-year-old company and the leader in delivering video analysis and instruction solutions to golfers and golf instructors around the world. We have over 10,000 coaches and 3 million athletes that use our software. 10,001 coaches now with Erica Larkin and 3,002 athletes with the Roy Chahadri girls. I'm very excited to announce that in addition to our integration with BodyTrack, our development team is fast at work testing our newest integration, and it's going to be super, super rad. That's a little teaser. There's big announcements coming. Um, a few more things about our company. Last week, we used the BodyTrack map to solve three struggles that were identified in the V1 game app and the data presented in V1 Coach. We're doing another webinar on Thursday just for V1 Game and V1 Coach, led by the head developer, Dallas Webster. If you want to learn more about this awesome shot tracking app, please join us. He's going to be showing off the new virtual caddy features. Okay, let's talk about who we are. I am Mandy Von C, sales manager for V1 Sports based in Charleston, South Carolina. I super duper love my job and my team, and I love putting great technology in the hands of golf instructors, golfers, and future LPGA or future PGA players. I look forward to Tuesdays every week because I get to connect with the experts and leave with new drills and new information about this technology. It is so rewarding and fun. That brings me to our panel of guests tonight. Roy is a golfer and a dad. He's tuned into many of my Tuesday traces and a few weeks ago, he called and purchased a body track map. Roy has two very, very special young golfers, Maeve and Parker and Emerson. Maeve likes to call herself the Maeve. I really love that because I have the Will Clark. Maeve, I love that you named yourself that. We might call you the Maeve all night. Uh, they have had some very special golf experiences like hitting balls with Jack Nicholas and playing courses like Kiowa in my backyard in Wirefield Village. Their games really took off since they started working with Erica in 2015. Clearly, both girls are huge Buckeyes fans. They have a passion for cooking and are responsible for the main courses at the tailgate parties each weekend. They love, Jake, you're going to love this. They love old movies such as Casablanca and High, no High Noon and the Johnny Carson show. How about that? I, I thought they were going to say something from like 1987 was old. So um, <laughs> even, even I would consider those movies old. So that's good. Yeah. They spend most of their time at school and using the simulator in their basement that you can see behind them. Okay, you guys bear with me. Their list of awards and credentials is super impressive, but we have to go through it. The Maeve is a four-time U.S. Kids Tour Champion, four-time U.S. Kids World Champion Qualifier, 15th in the Worlds in 2018, and 22nd in the Worlds this year. Maeve qualified for Drive, Chip, and Putt in 2016, 17, 18, and 19. She is the awesome. junior club champion in 2020 and on the junior PGA all-star team in 2019. The Maeve just turned 10 this past Friday. Happy birthday and congratulations on being the youngest guest ever on Tuesday Traces. <laughs> Hi, Maeve, how are you? Welcome. <laughs> Say hi. Are you excited to be here? Yes. <laughs> okay, let me keep going. Let me get everybody introduced and we can, so I can turn Jake loose. There's my here. Okay, Emerson turns 12 in December and is the reigning 2020 U.S. Kids Tour champion. To put that in perspective, the D.C. Tour has four of the top 25 in world championships in her division. She is five-time U.S. Kids World Champion qualifier, 38th in Worlds in 2017 and 2018, and is 24th in Worlds this year. 
Emerson qualified for drive, chip, and putt in 16, 17, 18, and 19. She was also on the junior PGA All-Star team the last two years and was player of the year for the junior PGA Crichton Farms team. Both girls excel at basketball, and Emerson has played on the boys' basketball league until the county wouldn't let her anymore. Emerson, I love it. That's why I want to call you a future PGA player instead of a future LPGA player. What do you think? I agree with you. Uh, Erica says that she can get them there, Jake. I told her she could get there, but she could totally challenge Bryson eventually. Um, okay, so Emerson, I have a question for you. I'm not going to hold it against you that you're a Buckeyes fan because you know I'm a Clemson grad. However, I'm curious about your experience with Tim Kite. If you guys don't know Tim, he does some mental coaching with the Buckeyes and his philosophy of E plus R equals O is the mantra behind what he uh, teaches. So Emerson, tell us a little bit about that. Uh, event plus response equals outcome. Well, I know that's super important to you. Can you tell us about your R's? Well, it was a really great experience meeting him. And um, we ordered some bracelets and shirts shortly thereafter. And basically we worked on my R's a lot, especially with golf and just regular life, making sure it, your R's influence your outcome, your O's. And just because the event is bad doesn't mean your outcome can be worse if you make the response good. I like it. That's pretty cool. So, um, Maeve, you have quite a resume for such a young lady that just turned 10 this past Friday. Can you please tell us about your experience hitting balls with Jack Nicholas? Um. Well, we've been doing it for the past how many years, Dabba? <laughs> Five years. Well, four technically, because we couldn't do it this year because of the coronavirus. But and it's just, and it's been really nice hitting golf balls with them. Um, Actually, and then tell me about you when you played. You guys talk a little louder because we're having a hard time hearing you. Maybe sit a little bit closer. Okay. And can you? Can you tell me about when you played Kiowa? Kiowa's in my backyard. It's one of the nicest courses. It's the ocean course. You guys played that, didn't you? Yes, we played it maybe like for like two or three years. Every year? Nice. And then we have, and we, um, I have, you, I can't talk. Well, we also, we played, we also play the Turtle Point, Cougar, Cougar Point, and part, um, the other courses around there. The Ocean Course was a great experience. We've played every time we've both played like 18 holes there. No, just I haven't it's, played 18 holes. I've just because it's nine. so just fun to play, and it's so beautiful, especially on the ocean. It is pretty. Yeah. It is super pretty. Um, Okay, in 2015, the girls started working with Erica Larkin, which is when their great games really took off, according to them and their father. They say that Erica is exceptional at working with kids and understanding how the girls work and learn best. She is not only a golf coach, but a real mentor and example. I agree. I want to be Erica Larkin when I grow up, or at least I want to have as much fun as Erica does when she makes videos for golf instruction. Uh, if you have not followed Erica on social media, I highly recommend it. My team and I have had a ton of fun the last week. Uh, watching your videos. the Erica, by the way, the cowboy video is really fun. I like <laughs> super you. love it. I, Jake, you should follow it. You're going to. Oh, I do. Erica, I Erica's, do. Erica's director of instruction at the club at Crichton Farm. She has been named Golf Digest number one teacher in Virginia since 2014. She is the Golf Digest best young teacher since 2012 and Golf Magazine named her one of the eight teachers to watch in 2019. Erica is from Queens and started playing golf at age eight with her parents who were also new to the game. Erica has a list of accolades a mile long. She wrote a book called A True Swing and has some of the most fun golf tent on any social media channel I have ever seen. And I have seen them all. I'm extremely grateful that you have shared your time with us tonight on such little notice to learn about the V1 pressure mat powered by Body Track, and to have our resident pressure mat expert and my friend Jake assist with analyzing Emerson and Maeve Swings. Thank you so much, Erica. I really, really, really appreciate it. Super oh, thank you guys for setting this up. And I'm looking forward to learning uh, from Jake and, and more about uh, just how to use this equipment with the girls moving forward. Yeah, it's been really fun. Connecting golf instructors around the world through this platform has been really fun. I mean, we have, looks like 75 people watching just on the Zoom and I'm sure most of them are 
um, golf instructor. So this is really cool that they're tuning in to see what we, uh, we can have Jake Tika teach us. So Erica, I'm curious, how did, I know you knew about the mat a long time ago, but did, did, did the girls just like show up with it Monday at their golf lesson and kind of throw it down? What, how did that happen? <laughs> uh, so I actually owned a body track mat maybe six years ago. It was early on in its development and, um, I used it one winter, one winter in the off season, tried to hook it up to my laptop. It was, it was good. I uh, learned a little bit at that point in time, but didn't move forward with it enough to really dive in. Like I, I wanted to, and, um, uh, you know, at the time it was a little cumbersome to take it outside. So come season, I never really made the switch. I ended up, um, you know, kind of putting it on the shelf. And so fast forward a few years, we're actually in the process at Creighton Farms of, of finishing construction on a learning center. So there will be more technology coming that I'll continue to, you know, build in and have access to. And, and uh, this may become a part of it again, likely. Um, but it was great because a couple weeks ago and, and Roy is, their dad is just super supportive and is always looking for that next thing that's going to help take them to the next level. And, and I'm always throwing ideas out there as well. And so he said, what do you think about, you know, the pressure mat? Is the learning center going to have one? And I said, well, yeah, but we're still six months or more away from that. He goes, I'm going to get one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and when you get it, let's, you know, work with it together and I'll help you guys set it up at home. The girls can have it for practice. We'll figure it out. And so here we are like a week and a half later. And, um, you know, so I'm back to uh, obviously trying to educate myself. I've been to enough seminars over the year that I'm familiar with the idea of moving pressure. I obviously had had access to one myself for, for a little while back a few years ago. So that's kind of where I'm starting from. But yeah, we just had some fun. We hooked it up. We captured some traces, which I know you were going to share and uh, started to get my mind around seeing their trace with their swings, which I already know so well. So it was kind of good to just layer that in and try to get my mind around what it means. But I also want to do the right thing because, you know, they're really special students and we don't want to take five steps backwards to take one step forward. So I want to make sure that I'm, you know, looking at the data correctly and that uh, we're making changes that make sense for them and their unique, their unique swings as they grow. Like that's the other kind of part that I'm really excited and curious to know is uh, not just an, a, a good student, but a junior student that is really developing and is going to continue to probably change how to best adapt that with this kind of technology. I think we've got like just the right person. Jake, does that get you super excited or what? Oh, I, I'm excited on the inside, but I'm, I'm keeping under control on the outside, just like a <laughs> golf tournament. <laughs> no, I think that's so cool. I mean, it's, you know, we've, Erica knows their swing so well, and I love that Mm -hmm. We have this new data and we get to look at, you know, it's so cool. First two very special um, students. So uh, really quickly, I, I always give, I, I try to always give something fun away. Um, so tonight I'd like to give away a signed copy of Erica's book and an autograph jar of Jake's hair cream. <laughs> so our, <laughs> you guys uh, don't know this, but we only have folks on our webinars that have beautiful hair. And Jake and I started this, so it's become a huge joke. So at the 745-ish hour or moment of our webinar, my team will pick a random winner. Um, if you're logged into the Zoom account, you're automatically entered. If you're in Facebook, just send an email to marketing at V1 Sports, and you will be, you will be entered to win uh, a copy of A True Swing, which is the real prize. And it will be autographed <laughs> by <laughs> Erica. And then uh, depending on how close Jake is and what he needs and what kind of favors I can pull, I may send a, an actual autographed can of his hair cream. And I can't leave you have a hat on, Jake. It's, it's, I'm very disappointed. Uh, it, it's, uh, it is the Windy City for a reason. So I've been out coaching all day and uh, I, didn't, I didn't find my hair game to be suitable for public con consumption. So, um, and by the way, it's not cream, okay? It's, it's like a like a paste it's like uh it's called sumo tech so okay it's, I stand yeah it's more guys put that in yeah. the notes that i screwed up the hair cream it's, <laughs> it's not a yeah it's not paste. a cream sorry yeah. okay so uh first things first so that everyone knows who my guy is there if you don't already um we have some of the most spectacular body track resources jake therm is definitely one of the top five if not the best 
He has been. <laughs> that that <laughs> actually been... is it. Yeah, that, that actually is I'm it. Kidding. My, I'm kidding. My sister-in-law would be so proud right now. <laughs> I'm so kidding. That actually is it. I'm kidding. He has been named one of the best young teachers in America by Golf Digest for three consecutive years. He has the largest Nike Junior Golf Camp and the largest U USA Junior Golf Team in the country. Uh, nobody has put more tour players on the pressure mat during tour events than Jake. Uh, Jake is absolutely, seriously, no joke, probably one of the top two pressure mat resources other than Terry Hashimoto, who developed it, and uh, always willing to do this, and I'm so grateful, and thank you for the, the short notice, Jake. I really appreciate it. No problem. My pleasure. Anything so, to help the team and take abuse from you. <laughs> so, Jake, what? how would you start? Uh, Erica's brand new to the technology. Just, you know, I'm sure. going to, like, turn you loose. Like, here, she's, you, you know her resume. She's a yeah. high-level teacher. Where do we start yeah. with this technology? So, um, I mean, she's been coaching these juniors for, and the funniest thing is the people that are the most, the players that are the most receptive to technology is always juniors, right? Um, my wife can't even download an app, but my nine-year-old can. Like, she'll show, he'll show her how to do it. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I love using technology because I probably was a victim of too many opinions uh, go, growing up. And, um, and, and just to be able to quantify someone's improvement, quantify their feel was always very enticing to me. So um, in terms of ground reaction forces, I was all in as of 2013, 2014, right around there. Uh, Body Track obviously presented a portable, affordable uh, option with that. And I am totally with Erica when she said, uh, how cumbersome it used to be to set up because I know that there's this picture at the PGA championship at Whistling Straits where I've got like the laptop out. I've got the camera stand set up. I'm trying to find a power source because my laptop battery didn't work. And, and then you had to, you actually had to click the button at the right time to start it and stop it. And uh, it, 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 it's really come a long way to where now you can get that uh, you know, in the palm of your hand on your phone. So um, I, I, Mandy and I have probably traveled with body tracks through more airports than anybody. And it's, it's gotten a lot, lot easier to do. So um, that, that is really cool. And then with juniors, yeah, juniors love technology. So right now I actually have my US 18, they're outside and I ditched them. They're, they're with my other coaches, but, uh, and they're doing a combine right now. So um Basically, it's our way of grading them. It's our way of uh, quantifying their improvement over time. And so if I was getting some, a, a junior on the body track, uh, I would do some baseline testing first. That's the first thing I would do. I would have them hit every club in their bag. It wouldn't be, just be a junior. I did this with Kevin Streelman the first time I ever had one at the John Deere Classic in 2014 or something. I made him hit every single club in their, their bag. I also made him go into a bunker with it. I also made him hit chips, pitches, uh, different trajectories, different lies, different environmental circumstances. And at that point, it was just data collection. Um, you know, he would ask me, what do you think? And I'm like, that's a really loaded question. I'm just, I'm just here uh, seeing, seeing what things are before I even make a comment on what they should be. So um, with juniors, I would start off with like wedges and then I'd go into some of the longer clubs. And, and then obviously you got to end with driver. And something that I would tell anybody that's new to a body track is um, don't be surprised when those traces are different and, and different is good um, because obviously um, there's a lot of factors that go into it. But essentially what I would tell a junior is hitting a wedge is not like hitting a driver. So the interaction with the ground wouldn't be the same. So very first off, um, get it turned on, uh, wait for it to center and then just data collect all through the bag. Um, Cause to me, when you're, when you're meeting someone for the first time, you can't learn enough about them. Those are great points. I love it. Thank you. So girls, do you guys, did you guys understand that with, when Jake said that each club in your bag will give you a totally different trace? Have you guys got on the mat with different clubs and practiced different things and looked at it? Yeah. That's something that coach Erica has really helped me with because at first, I was using my driver swing with my irons, and then we fixed that. And then I started using my irons with my drivers, but then I kind of, I got it fixed. Fixed. Um, 
worked out, but she's helped me a lot with that. Nice. Hey, Jake, how much work on with kids do you do for putting? Oh, uh, with the body track, uh, absolutely. I, th I think balance is often overlooked uh, in putting. And um, uh, I remember this, uh, and well, I'll pick up the name after I drop it, but I, I gave uh, Bill Haas a putting lesson at Sea Island on a body track. And he told me for the life of him, he couldn't stop uh, cutting his stroke. And uh, though the center of pressure didn't move uh, to lead and trail, it was very centered. His pressure in his heel and toe would change almost in the direction of the uh, of the stroke that he was making. So I actually made him pressure the ground the opposite day, opposite way. So more uh, lead toe trail heel and hold it. And actually it was able to influence the path of his stroke. So um, I think balance is not looked at enough in terms of putting um, it. And I'm always asked by instructors what I've seen with tour players um, with their putting elite level players, which these juniors obviously are. Um, usually I've seen uh, very similar numbers where it's a little bit more on the lead side. It can also be 50, 50, uh, lead side trail side and the heel and toe numbers are very constant, um, throughout the stroke and yet different based on slope. So, uh, people would pressure themselves differently if they were on a side slope, uh, so on and so forth. But obviously you would want those numbers not to vary so much. And this just shows you how, um, sensitive the V1 pressure mat is, you actually can see it move as they swing a putter head because every little movement that we make does show up in the ground to some extent. Obviously, stability of that center of pressure uh, usually would imply, uh, you know, some sense of balance and some sense of uh, repeatability in the stroke. Nice. Um, do you think maybe we can pull up one of the traces and have you just tell Erica and the girls the basics on what we're looking at? Cause they're using it a lot at home. And I think that maybe we teach them about the dot, you know, the center of pressure dot, what that means. And then, you know, the other traces clearly are more the level of you and Erica, the girls and I will just sort of listen because that's above our heads as beginner. Well, they're not beginner golfers. I'm a beginner golfer. But um, Anna, do you mind pulling up and let's do, you, who wants to start? Emerson, you want to start? Let's start with those righty swings. So Jake, will you just tell the girls before we start analyzing the swings, like what, what are we looking at here? Sure. And uh, can, can we, if we can't zoom in there, can we get the magnifying glass up on the center of pressure chart, please? Yeah, that'd be perfect. Okay. So um, when you tape a face on view, um, I think this is important. To know. And, and again, Erica and the juniors already understand this, but this I'm speaking to someone that may have never seen this before. When you're doing the face on view, the lead side is actually the, the, the left foot for this right-handed golfer. The lead foot is actually on the left side of the chart, even though it's on the right side of the screen. So when you do video face on, uh, that's how it will, uh, the lead side will be on the left side and the uh, trail side would be on the right side of that center of pressure chart, even though it's the opposite. So, um, and, and I can't quite see the numbers and that's okay. We don't need to see the numbers. Um, I can tell there you we the go. numbers. 67. Is that 67? Okay, not too bad, eh? Um, all right, so 67 and then 30 something on the, the, the trail side. This is very typical and it looks like that's an iron. Would that be correct? This is Emerson, right? Is that an yep. iron Emerson? Yes, I think that's an iron. Okay, what iron is it? Uh, Any idea? I can't see from there, but I think it's a seven iron. That's what we were working on with. Okay, perfect, perfect. So uh, this would be very typical of uh, elite level players. I just said that you might see putting 50-50. I have seen it. Um, but what I haven't seen is I haven't seen anyone 50-50 at a dress with an iron who plays elite level golf. They're always a touch on the lead side. Um, so her being at 67%, uh, again, would make sense to me. And probably what I'm guessing um, is that if we go from, uh, and again, P1 to P2. So if we go into her takeaway, so just go to the takeaway where the shaft is parallel to the ground. I think what you'll see is, yeah, the center of pressure will go back. But right before, so if you go back to address first, address, and then right before the club moves, I, I, I think uh, my buddy James Light says a saying that, um, and I have to give credit where credit's, credit's due. He's, he's just brilliant. 
he has this great saying that the golf swing starts before the club moves. And I just love that because every time I watch an elite level player, I will always notice that they'll push down on their lead side just a touch. Um, it could be only a couple percentage points to get to accommodate. Again, they would be on for the right hand golf for the left foot to accommodate the club swinging away from the target. And I've, I've just always loved that. It, it, the golf swing starts before the club moves. So typically what you see with a lot of golfers is that you'll see them push down to accommodate the club swinging back. It's almost a, uh, a pressure trigger um, to accommodate the, the motion. So you can go ahead and go to two or the, the takeaway, I'm sorry. And then we can go to the lead arm parallel in the backswing. So there we go. And, and we're going to stop around there. Can, can I get the magnifying glass again, please? You guys are awesome. I, and then I just want to see on the lead and trail, so down a little bit with it. Beautiful. So I'm seeing 60 some odd percent, 68 maybe. Um, so typically with the golfers that hit it the furthest, now you guys are juniors and I know for a fact that your coach wants you to hit the ball absolutely as far as possible. And if you're going to play on the PGA tour, I would love for you to beat Bryson, to be honest with you. Um, we'll just leave it like that. Uh, but anyways, the, we'll get, we want the maximum amount of vertical pressure on the trail side somewhere before the completion of the backswing. So I, I think we can go step it a little bit beyond this and that'll probably be the maximum number it looks like if I'm not mistaken. Okay, and, and I can't um, quite see that number, but but 70. this would be 70. Okay, and that was the highest number? Mm -hmm. Okay, now go to the top. Uh, so what's the number at the top, please? One of, uh, 67. Uh, yeah. 67. So you can see that 70 was achieved. That's the highest number of, of pressure uh, under the, the trail foot was achieved before the completion of the backswing. So that, that player is already unweighting. So Emerson's already starting to push with the lead side uh, before the completion of the backswing. And that's what I see with everybody that creates speed. So many amateurs you'll see uh, really think that the, the, cause that, you know, pressure weight, that's all the same thing to them. It's not. Um, but they really think that the, the highest amount of pressure should be under their trail foot at the top of the swing. I have not seen that with an elite level player. So the fact that she's already starting to push down with her lead foot before the completion of the backswing one is a very good indicator of a good trace, but it's also a, a good indicator of speed creation and sequence. So um, looks very much like a linear trace. Want to take her down to impact, please? Actually, I'm sorry. Take her down to lead arm parallel on the downswing. Okay, there we go. And lead arm parallel on the downswing. So that's a little bit more. So yeah, I'm going to have to step it. Oh, okay. So we're, we're missing that frame. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, lead arm parallel on the downswing. We can get into that later, especially with the driver. That's something Sasha McKenzie really helped me to understand that. Basically, just like I told you how the maximum amount of vertical pressure on the trail side is before the completion of the backswing, lead arm downswing is really important in terms of club head speed creation. But you can see that uh, Emerson's already in her lead side. I can't quite see that number. Let me see. Beautiful. 67%. So many amateurs who are uh, not as good, as talented as these two juniors uh, almost will look, not only do they look very similar on the video to their address position uh, at, at impact, um, they will, their pressure will almost match that of their address position. We need our juniors especially to get to the lead side uh, sooner than they could ever possibly imagine, just again, for speed creation. And again, the higher handicappers will kind of model that address where it, if they started 55, they almost only get to 55. And you can see Emerson is not even hitting, contacting the ball at that point and already in the, in the lead side with her pressure. So that's wonderful. Go ahead to go to impact. I always set impact if you want to show the people how to do that. So go to impact and we'll just kind of set it right there. Good. And, and the reason we do that is because obviously now you can go with the different positions of the swing at any point. And when we get into the V chart and all that kind of stuff, um, 
But uh, let's go ahead and click it all the way to the finish. So you will see that the juniors uh, in particular, I've always noticed this, um, kind of through impact as a transition, they're always going to be, uh, a lot of juniors are very much going to be up in their toes. And we'll get into the verticals and stuff. Uh, some of this could be a strength issue. Some of this could be uh, just a potential power source. Juniors typically will be more in their toes than that of uh, older players um, and will typically have higher verticals um, because they are smaller in stature. So they will push up the ground. You know, think Lexi Thompson. I mean, that's a good image, especially Lexi with a driver. Uh, juniors typically are have more pressure in the toes, uh, tend to use higher verticals. And to be honest with you, at this point, I find that to be fine because that would be obviously one potential power source for the junior. So we do not want to take that away from them. Mm, that's interesting. Um, mm -hmm. Jake, tell them what that white dot is and what that yellow yeah. line is. Yes. Uh, thank you. The, the center of pressure is that dot. So think of it this way, and I'll pretend these are my feet, but they're not. Um, the, uh, if you push down, if we stood on the mat and we let it center out to 50, 50, and I started pushing down on my lead side harder than my trail side, that center of pressure would go to my lead side. So it's the average amount of vertical force between the lead and the trail foot. Um, so left and right, depending on the golfer, you are, uh, the dexterity and then, uh, and then the toes and the heels. Okay. So wherever that average amount of pressure is, is where that center of pressure will move. And then you could see the values of that uh, with the numbers uh, displayed. And then the line that you that uh, Mandy was talking about is actually the trace. So that is how the center of pressure uh, has moved throughout the motion. So if we just put that on replay, you're gonna see that white center of pressure uh, move, but it's also going to leave a trace. So when we talk Tuesday traces, this is the trace. And uh, we found a lot of traces um, out there. And uh, to be honest with you, uh, this, all, all of them, all of them different because every golfer is different. So this is kind of a, a, a fingerprint, uh, a little bit of, of each individual player, because though we have categorized that in eight traces or so, or what have you. Um, to be honest with you, there's unlimited traces out there because that would be, uh, you know, predicated on the fact that, you know, uh, they, they could, you can take this out on the golf course and do it in different environments, uphill, downhill, sl side slope. I already told you I took it in bunkers, stuff like that. So really there's an unlimited amount of traces, but this would be a linear trace. And, and again, very common one for uh, an elite level junior. Awesome. So Emerson, do you see that the gray numbers on the left is your left foot and the right is your right foot and the top is your toes and the bottom is your heels? Do you know that? Yes. Um, okay. Explain that to me. Awesome. And um, Jake, can you, have you guys, girls, did you guys look at the other graphs at all? Uh, a little bit, but um, some of them, we, some of them, Kachirka recognized, but some of them she didn't, and we we're looking for more in, information on that, on those. Sure. Jake, so, you gotta, yeah, so, so the V chart, and I, I always say this uh, to any coach that's, I'm getting them in the door, and your coach, Erica, is, she's not only in the door, she's already, you know, in the elevator up to the penthouse. So, um, <laughs> but if you're new to, uh, you know, V1 pressure mat, what I would tell them is first get really good with the center of pressure because that's the most teachable chart. Juniors, uh, beginning level golfers, you have them on, you put them on their live, they push down on the lead side, see the center of pressure, they see their foot and th they totally get that. And to be honest, that's still the chart, despite my knowledge of the other charts, that's still the chart I teach the most off of with the most golfers, especially amateur golfers. Um, but yeah, I do like the other charts because I'm an enormous nerd. So uh, the V chart is um, basically what you need to see is velocity, um, as we, velocity is the, chart. Yeah, the V chart, the velocity chart is the speed in which they are moving laterally. Okay. So if we go to, um, let's just kind of play the swing slow here. Yeah, there we go. 
And we already said impact, so we're going to see a green line on, on impact uh, coming up. Okay, cool. And I, I'm pretty sure that green line's already there. So we've got a double peaker. Um, and a double peaker is someone that has a little bit of uh, backup in the swing. Typically someone that has, and backup by that, I mean by pressure, uh, moving slightly back and then again forward. Again, someone that's in their toes with high verticals will usually be a double peaker. So um, let's step it down from the top of the swing. Is that, what does that mean, Jake? Yeah. Is that, so that good? Means, Do we... uh, if, for a junior that is trying to create the most speed that they can, um, you're probably going to want to see some backup, especially with the longer clubs. I imagine we will definitely see that with her on her driver. Uh, if, if we're talking about flighting a wedge though, right, uh, then probably backing up that trace, we'd wanna see more of an abbreviated linear trace, um, just because that obviously the goal for the player isn't to hit the wedge absolutely as far as they possibly can. It's more to uh, have a predictable low point and have it take off at a predictable trajectory. So typically with, with tour players, I've seen in their wedges, when they flight the, flight the ball, it tends to be abbreviated linear. So that peak right there, her first peak, that is the fastest that she is moving laterally. And then it kind of dissipates to impact. So take it to impact. So that would mean the white line gets back down to the baseline right there, which it does. Very good there. And then actually, she, so she's going to start moving forward again. And that's when we get into the double peak right there which again is typically something that you see when someone is on their toes. They also, in terms of if you're watching her swing and not just this B chart, you're gonna see someone that also have a lot of side bend through impact, which obviously she does. So is, is, as Erica works with her, is that double tap, I, call, I wanna call it a double tap from, from hacking. From, <laughs> yeah, he loves that. Yeah. Dang it. Is that something they're gonna to wanna to get rid of eventually? So th that's the million dollar question, isn't it? It is a seven iron and I would consider a seven iron to be a, um, uh, a scoring club. But I always think, so when people ask me, like, when do you change a trace? And, and again, that's the million dollar question. To me, it's always ball flight verified. So if she does this and she hits her seven iron further, like a club further, or gosh, help us, even if it's two clubs further, it's all right by me right now. Okay. Erica, what do you think? Um, so if anything, as of late, uh, her path started to move a little bit too much left. And so I would say that uh, we've had the conversation about wedges and irons and how we don't want to muscle them to the point where we're losing control or we're compromising her swing path in that way. Um, so really, I think, you know, I am curious to hear a little bit more on this because she hits it, in my opinion, really solid and really far for her age and for her size. Um, she hits her seven iron, hundred and 40 yards. Um, so, you know, awesome. she's hitting it out there. So she could stand to, I think, smooth out a little bit of that with some of her irons and kind of save it for the driver. But then again, I'll, I'll defer to you. I mean, what are your thoughts there is to try to smooth that out a little bit and, and potentially um, shift her path a little bit more neutral? Yeah. So, um, and her path's been getting a little bit left, you said? Yeah, lately. Okay. Yeah, so um, if, I, if I don't want, and this is the cool thing about the V1 pressure mat, right? Is that you can, you, it's not stuck in the floor requiring four people to move it, right? Um, so uh, the first thing I would do with someone that backs up their pressure or a double peaker a little bit is I would take high lofted clubs, put the V1 pressure mat on a down slope so it looks like, you know, most driving ranges, if you go off the tee, kind of goes down into the range. Mm -hmm. And basically with those high lofted clubs, if you back up your pressure, if you're too much in the toes, uh, it, it does, it is an indicator of a certain release pattern or obviously a very active release pattern. Um, so typically once you do that 
to a junior, they're pretty much worried that they're about to hit the ball on the forehead. So, um, so putting that pressure, uh, Matt, on the down slope, right, and getting them to set up and hit the ball solid, what will happen is it will make their pressure more abbreviated to the trail side, which on a scoring club, seven iron all through wedges is probably advantageous to some extent. And then, um, obviously, if they're going to make solid contact from there, they would get their pressure to the lead side and trap it there. They couldn't back up. Otherwise, again, it would come at a price, especially on a downslope with a high lofted club. So that's what I call with body track. I call it an environmental educator. So um, I love doing that um, even before I incorporate training aids is putting them in a circumstance or environment, especially children. They're so they're so adaptive and uh, (laughs) no offense, they're inherently more coachable than adults. They just are. (laughs) So um, putting them in that circumstance, uh, they they can kind of figure it out. And I always love it when a player, uh, especially a junior tells me, uh, as opposed to me tell them, Um, they tell me what they're feeling. And then obviously I've captured it. So that might be the first thing I would do. Um, That would also lessen her side bend through impact. Um, and and another thing that you could do is, uh, I would call it like the Mo Norman drill. So if you were overly concerned with her being, uh, too much in the toes, um, and and her maintaining her, uh, connection or her kinetic point of connection with the ground, um, I I would have her hit flat footed shots, um, basically where she's not allowed to jump and, and, and almost have that be good vitamins, uh, to maintain her, uh, her connection with the ground. So, um, that would be pretty interesting to see her do that on the mat. I bet you she still shifts the pressure forward. I bet you, but uh, she would be much more, uh, much more able to swing her club path more out at the ball and yet uh, still make, you know, ball first contact. Okay. So, it, so the thought there, Jake, is to swing yep. not out of her or not pull her toes back, but more flat footed. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's uh, for, for the, biomech people out there that'd be like trail foot eversion and trail ankle pronation basically what that means is that the heel with so many so many juniors you'll see pop up with that trail foot they'll come to the toes now again all that language i just used all that atomical terms i just threw up in my own mouth i never use that language of the junior we're I very impressed them, jake we're very impressed well, okay I, can't, <laughs> I would i would say that uh, i always tell the junior um they're like, what do you think of that? And I go, well, I think we got to name that dance move that you're doing, right? Uh, especially if we're going to break that out at the club. So um, basically, if you quiet that down, um, you want uh, the, the golfer, the, the junior needs to feel like the club almost swings past them a little bit. Um, so they can, again, maintain that connection. And they need to feel as though the club almost pulls them to their, to their follow through as opposed to, uh, you know, jumping up or uh, getting into the toes too early. Emerson, do you feel yourself doing that, jumping a little bit? Yeah, I definitely yeah. feel myself doing that. And, like, this morning, I definitely worked a lot more on that. Like, I'm really trying to do what, what like, the flat-footed drill. I'm really trying to not jump because I find that when I stay more on, like, my – not my heels, but, like, when I stay – don't jump and stay more connected to the ground and I make sure I transfer my weight properly, it the clubs go a lot further. They're, I don't lose distance awesome. at all. It only goes further. There you go. So you just you just sold me on why I would work more on a, at least with scoring clubs, I'd work more on a linear trace, um, a little less in the toes. So trying to put the center of pressure uh, back on the center of pressure line through, and then with the wedges, probably less load of the trail side than you do. Yeah. I mean, it, you just told me I hit it better and I hit it a little bit further. Great. I'm sold. Let's do it. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, we have got to look at Maeve's trace where we've spent a lot of time on Emerson's. Um, so can you guys pull up the Maeve's? Cause I want to see Erica, do you want to look at this driver or what do we Yeah. You got to look, look at her driver swing. Cause she's got some, she's got some power. So I'm curious to see your thoughts on her. Um, cool. What, she's, what do you she guys been working on Erica? She typically cuts the ball as a lefty. Um, I've actually tried to shallow her out a little bit as well over the years. And, and she kind of, you know, will, will flirt between being sometimes just right. And then again, getting a little bit 
more um, more steep than I want her to be. Uh, but currently she's hitting the ball really, really good. So I feel like this is a good capture. And she hit some really nice drives when we were when we were filming this. So. All right, so let's, Anna, can you play it and have Jake have a look-see at this? Jake, have you seen this yet? Uh, I just what you sent me. And yeah. as I'm looking this, that's something that I think is really fun for juniors. I, I did a, a video not too long back about Kyle Berkshire and how I called it like the Donkey Kong move. Sometimes if you want to create speed with juniors, you put them on a body track and literally um, have them shift the center of pressure back and forth as fast as they possibly can, even – even if they're moving the club while I do that. And that, that V chart, I always tell them it, it, all I ever tell juniors is I go, I go, you, you're familiar with the Richter scale when it comes to earthquakes and they go, yeah. And I'm like, okay, I really want you to peak that thing. Kind of like, uh, you know, my heart rate is when, every time like Mandy asked me a question. So I want that thing to go up and down, right. It, it, as much as they can. So if we're looking at this trace here, Okay, so um, again, uh, probably uh, if we can use the magnifying glass again, that would be awesome. Can't quite see it. Okay, so um, again, it's going to be uh, the op the opposite as, as you're viewing it. So go ahead and send her back. J just maybe to the takeaway, that'd be good. Yep. So th if you guys saw it, put it right back down. See how the center of pressure moves forward first. Okay. Mm -hmm. That one, I mean, I don't want to say that that's mandatory, but I, I've never seen anyone that created a lot of speed. And Erica already said that, how good she's hitting it and everything. That center of pressure has to go forward as the club swings back. Okay. Basically this, your, your, your lead foot <gasps> is pushing. There's a dog. There's the lead foot is pushing to accommodate, pushing down to accommodate the mass <sighs> shifting back. All right. So, I, I kind of think of it as two pitching mounds, not just one. Everybody knows about maybe the pitching mound on the back foot to propel the, the mass forward, but there's one on the lead foot to propel the mass back. Okay. So um, I think that little pressure trigger is really mandatory to getting the club moving and creating speed. Uh, even if you don't see anything moving on the video, they really should be interacting with the ground before you see the club move. Uh, anyways, we'll go up to the top. Okay, cool. So she, uh, what, where was, uh, where was her highest, uh, pressure on the trail side? If we can back up just a little bit and yeah, step it back. Just curious. You can, and by the way, you could already see how quick she was to the lead side, which is great. Was that her highest back? Back a little bit. Does it concern you that she goes so much on her toes so early? So, that's a, that's a great question. So typically what I see is most high level players get uh, when they struggle, actually get into the heel in the backswing almost immediately. So they actually don't have that little bit of a, a mass move or what I would call it is, is kind of loading the trail hip a little bit. Um, so in other words, maybe when they get too much in the heel, they rotate the pelvis immediately as opposed to loading the right side or the trail side before they rotate it. Um, but something that I've never seen, I've never seen a player not get some kind of pressure into the heel at some point in the backswing, because really what that is, is reflective of them rotating the pelvis behind them. And we obviously know that's very advantageous for power to, uh, to rotate the lower body. So um, typically if she is rotating, obviously she's very flexible and very mobile. Um, if she is getting the hip to rotate behind her and you see pressure in the toe, uh, typically they're losing their, uh, their inclination to the ground. So they lose their posture just a little bit uh, due to the restriction. So as long as there's pressure going in that heel at some point in the backswing, um, it doesn't have to be there at the top, but is, if, as long as it is, usually that's indicative of a uh, free rotation of the pelvis in the backswing, which is a potential power source. Um, but yeah, you're right. By the top of her swing, she's already transferring to the toes. So something that you could potentially look at is, uh, is, is foot flare. Uh, that would be the simple one, right? We could train mm -hmm. it. We could put a, an alignment rod. We could do whatever. But really having some kind of foot flare um, 
on, on whatever side is limited is, is probably pretty solid advice for most golfers, not just juniors. Um, but yeah, she, I, and you can see she's quick to the lead side. So go ahead and play her to impact. Good. And I, I really want to see when that thing backs up. So yeah, let's, let's send her right back, go to impact. And again, I always love setting it. See how that center of pressure is backing up through impact. Again, that, there's, there's, there's a lot to love about that. And, and don't believe the hype. Backing up your pressure can be very advantageous. You will see it with juniors. You will see it with juniors with uh, high club head speed. Because basically, again, I'm going to bring up Lexi Thompson because I have, you know, two female junior golfers here. And I think she's a great role model of where the game is. Um, you know, her lead side is off the ground almost completely. You could fit a golf digest under there. So um, really, when you're quick to the lead side and go into the toe and propel that lead side up, it's very advantageous for attack angle. I can't imagine that she's too down at the ball on, on the track man. Is she, Erica? No, no, she usually hits up on it. Yeah, and, and, and all the LPGA Tour players that I've either measured or worked with myself, I mean, they average about three to four degrees up at the ball, and that's, that's a prerequisite. And, and the cat's out of the bag on attack angle. We already know the effects that that has on power with the driver. So um, launching that lead side up in the air as much as possible, um, I don't mind if the center of pressure – I mean, the ball is on a tee after all, okay? It's a different thing when it's uh, when it's a flighted wedge on the ground. So um, that so if you go to impact and then past it, you'll see that the center of pressure will back up. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes, sometimes the mass and the pressure can be moving in the opposite directions, and that to me is okay. And the funniest thing is to look at the video; you would never know that she's pushing down hard. Uh, at least on the uh, on the lead and the trail side at different points of the swing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's play it one more time since Jake said that, Anna. I got to see that. Somebody asked me today, can you really not see it? I'm like, you really can't see it. No, no. <laughs> you it, really it, can't. I, I'll tell you what, the understanding of this makes you a very good guesser. Uh, but you still are guessing. Um, yeah, I, I mean, if you zoom in the foot, I, I, I give myself maybe 75% chance of guessing. I can't quantify it. I can't tell you how much, but I could probably guess where the center of pressure is. Um, but at the same time, why would, why would you guess when you can measure it and be for certain? And, and Erica did a very good thing. It, your clients will always tell you, well, I'm hitting it good, so I'm not coming in. It's like, what are you kidding me? Get in here now because <laughs> I want to capture everything about what's good. Because at, at some point, I, I think uh, junior golf is like pushing a boulder up a, up a hill, right? Uh, like Greek mythology there. But basically, you're going to have some highs and you're going to have some lows. But hopefully the next time you're at your low, it's better than it was before. So um, I, I have news for you that, you know, as, as good as she's hitting it now, it, it probably won't last forever, but some, uh, but, but success leaves clues. And, and what you can't, what is inarguable is her results currently. So to have this and to reference back to this, you know, in a month's time, in two months time, whenever, I hope you play, I hope you play great forever. But the reality is at some point, you'll probably need to look back at when you're swinging at your best. You look at your numbers, you look at how you're interacting with the ground. And um, I promise you, if you are struggling and you get on the pressure mat, it will be a stark difference. Hey, Erica, were, did you know that she was that much in her toes before this? No, no, I, I, I didn't really think about it. I would have said Emerson, yes, but, you know, I, I didn't see that as much with Maeve. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't. I, I mean, playing that video, I wouldn't have known that. Of course, I mean, you can't see it, but. It's, it's interesting to, to all of a sudden see that in a trace after and not, and not, you know, having not known at all. Uh, yeah. Maeve, do you, do, do you feel that when you're swing? Do you know what we're talking about? Do you feel like you're a little bit more in your toes than your heels? Not that it's a bad thing. I'm just curious on a scroll back so we can see the pressure. Maeve, do you know what we're talking about? 
Well, you see how at this this trace you have a lot of pressure in your toes, and they're taught that's what they're talking about, how that affects your ball flight. Have you have you have you looked at that yet? No, not really. But like basically, do you mean like on how it feels? Do you mean like if I feel like unbalanced when I swing, or do I feel like? No, I was I I was just curious because we're looking at your trace and you have a lot of weight in your toes, and so I'm just wondering if you felt that because. It's, it's hard to see it. Erica, have you guys had any conversations about that or whether or not to, to discuss it or bring it to her attention? Yeah, not yet. Not since a week ago when we started with this. And, and on the, in the past, it's been more about just sticking or finish and um, keeping it simple in that way for her, you know, because she typically has rotated through really well. It's never been about rotation because a lot of times I find with students is when they're on their toes, they don't always rotate they get into some weird tilts to get the club through, but she's always rotated pretty well um, into that front side. So yeah, it's, it's a pretty gorgeous sure. golf swing. Thank you. Yes, yes it is. <laughs> hey Jay, can you talk about the third graph that we didn't go sure. over yet? Sure. Well, Anna pulls and, and, that up. And, you guys real quick, Grant Brissacker that's tuned in tonight is our random, um, randomly drawn winner that will receive um, seriously a copy of Erica's signed book. So thank you, Grant, for tuning in. Um, we will include some silly jokes as prizes as well. So sorry, I, now the third, the third draft. I, I, I can't believe I'm not getting one, but um, anyways, uh, can you- There's can one, you in the mail to, one in the mail to okay. you too, Jay. <laughs> Perfect. I, I, can't, I can't wait to read the message. Um, so, uh, can we go on? I, I, I know we want to do the verticals, but can we do the V chart real quick? Just go back. I just want to point something out real quick. So this is kind of interesting. So you, do you see how her peaks are under? So um, opposite of her sisters. So her, um, her average uh, lateral speed peaks the highest away from the target. So uh, basically what does that mean? That means she's got really good brakes um, and means she's very good at transmitting speed and energy to the club head or what I call cracking the whip. So when you see the peaks on the bottom of the graph, right, it means her highest lateral speeds are actually away. And anybody that ever saw sports science saw that, you know, Rory's hips actually rotate in the opposite direction uh, through impact. At least they did when he was uh, much younger. Yeah. Um, so that's just kind of interesting. So a lot of people will send me screenshots and go, is this thing working? And uh, no, it's working. They're like, I'm used to seeing the, the peaks above it. And again, this just, this just goes to show you that hitting a driver is not the same as hitting an iron. We looked at her uh, sister and she was hitting an iron. Now she's hitting a driver. So that's just her applying the brakes at the right time to transmit the most amount of speed and energy in the club. Um, go ahead and go to the verticals for me. Good job. Good job, Maeve. That's very cool. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, cracking that whip, that's good. So um, everybody loves the verticals and, and you should. And um, I, I really, it's interesting if, if verticals are teachable in the moment, but they're definitely something that you wanna measure and watch over time uh, because of all the implications that I said that happen through uh, impact and stuff like that. So um, if you can, uh, you, we've got three different colors up there, right? If we can, can we use a magnifying glass for me, please? Just to show the bottom. So the yellow is the trail, the blue is the lead, and then uh, the orange is the total between those two. So um, basically what you're doing is you're calculating, uh, obviously when those, uh, those graphs are moving up, you're calculating uh, lead and trail, which foot is contributing at what point to the vertical, um, which is kind of neat. And I call it like your initial thruster and your secondary thruster, because sometimes with, uh, with certain players, um, one foot will be contributing uh, sooner than the other one. And then obviously the orange is the total of the player. So what the kind of the key takeaways of verticals is that most of the longest players, now the PGA Tour players, not necessarily the ones I've worked with that haven't had the highest verticals, uh, but it'd be interesting to uh, all the long drive guys that I've been around measured or worked with myself, um, they always get uh, at least up to 1.7 units 
if, if not two. Basically that baseline at the bottom is, is your, your measured in a unit of one, one mass unit. And so basically, uh, you know, it, a lot of the tour players have been 1.3, 1.4 with the driver. So that would be, you know, almost one and a half their body units that they're pushing up through the golf ball. Um, if I'm trying to make the world's longest golfer, I am going to try to make them push up from the ground absolutely as high as possible. And I think the highest that I've seen has probably been 2.25, um, where, uh, again, that this is like where you have fun with juniors. And you try to have them treat the chart as uh, as the Richter scale. You're trying to make them peak it as high as they can. I actually, what I do with juniors, and I and I, I'm curious what Erica has done uh, for verticals because I'm always curious what teachers are doing out there for verticals. But we do uh, we do a lot of gym work where you know it's it's getting cold out here. We're about to move inside. Um, I actually have them when we measure them. Uh, actually make a uh, standing vertical jump and we measure how high up on the, just like a basketball player or an Olympian, we measure high, how high up they can go. And then we measure it by how much that they're jumping. So you don't have to use the pressure mat. And my, my indoor facility is at Athletico Golf Performance in Oakbrook. So I'm at a, a, a PT clinic. So we don't use just the V1 pressure mat just for golf. We use it for athletic training. And uh, I, we have the kids literally jump on the mat without a golf club, see how high they can get. Then we have them swing a golf club and see how close they could get um, to that number. So er Erica, what, what, have you, what have you done um, in the past that's been very effective for you know, vertical training? And, and obviously now you can measure it. So that's, that's really cool. Yeah, definitely. I mean, things like um, obviously step drills are a little bit more la linear, but um, certainly anything that would preload verticals in the, in the legs and the knees, like we call it a lay an egg drill or really honestly that crazy cowboy video I did the other day, that idea that we want to kind of get down into that secondary load, that squatty move, and then push up from there. Um, recently Emerson and Maeve have also been on board with the uh, Golf Fitness X, which is part of the Orange Whip family of, of products and programs, has a fitness component. And so Emerson, uh, in particular, has been really disciplined with doing swing workouts of the day with that equipment, the power peel, and now they have a new kit. And so long story short, now that I'm trying to plug all that stuff, but she's doing a lot of swinging with resistance uh, strapped okay. down from her waist down to either the peel or her feet. So she's building golf muscle and speed with that program. And so I'm really curious to actually see how uh, her swings and her traces look with some of that equipment on. And then when we take it off and she's released out of those, those bands uh, and that resistance, like how much more vertical she might get as a kind of a quick result, but also over the course of, you know, maybe a few months from now, as she continues to work on it through this winter, where she starts and then where she ends. Uh, so it's going to be a little experiment, a little side experiment for us, for sure. I, I want awesome. to see you guys back here in January because I want to I want to see that. I want to see that. Plan. I want to see those traces. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I love, love, yeah, I mean, again, I, I spend all day with PTs, doctors, and personal trainers in the winter. I love working with bands, TheraBands, resistance bands. Uh, that which does the work does the learning. So the fact that you're training her that way, I think is awesome. And um, something, a little side note here to the advantages of the pressure mat as it applies to verticals. This is from Dr. Sasha McKenzie. He, he uh, calculated um, uh, the ground force reaction, the verticals between uh, Rory McElroy and Justin Thomas were actually very close to another, one another. And yet, um, Justin Thomas, because he's in his toes and completely off the ground, just by looking at that in a video or a still frame image, you would tell yourself, well, Justin Thomas has more verticals than Rory, and actually they're identical. To, and it goes with something Erica just said, it actually all lies in the shallow squat. So Rory lowers more in transition uh, than Justin Thomas does. So thus he loads more. So that's when he pushes up, he doesn't have to leave the ground to have as much vertical force 
as Justin Thomas, who does. And you could only know that by putting them on the V1 pressure map. That is so cool. Jake, final thoughts for the girls and then uh, some advice for Erica moving forward with the technology. <laughs> yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think I'm qualified. Uh, girls, uh, you, you have to kill it. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, you, 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 and I'm not sorry. You have to hit it past everybody else. Um, that's where the game, it, it's not where the game's going. That's where the game, I actually believe has always been. So um, really old dead guys like Bobby Jones hit it past Walter Hagen and Arnold Palmer uh, was doing extremely well. And then a young uh, fat kid from Ohio named Jack Nicholas. I think you met him. Um, they, uh, he hit it like 30 by Arnold Palmer. And then a guy named Tiger Woods was longer compared to the field than anybody. So I actually don't think there's anything new under the sun. It is, it is very advantageous to hit the ball and max out how far you can. And if you're familiar with TPI, which I know Erica is, uh, they talk about speed windows and you guys are currently located in your first one. The majority of the speed you will learn in your life happens now, not when you're old and broken down like me. All right. So, uh, and basically if I can learn any speed at 41, it was only, only because I never scratched the surface when I was your age, I was being told to let the club do the work. I don't even know where my clubs are, but I'm pretty sure they're not doing any work. And, um, <laughs> and, and uh, I was told to massage I was told to massage the ball. I, I, I promise you this is true. Massage the ball around the golf course. Um, I don't want you to massage the ball. I want you to knock it out of round. So you have to use a new one each hole. So um, I know Erica knows that. Anyone that had, I know people that are watching this know that. Anyone that has had success with juniors, um, basically, uh, your, if your juniors hit it past other people's juniors, they win. So um, you, you got a great coach, um, obviously, and she's tons of fun, which is good too, uh, judging by the cowboy video. Um, so um, I, I would just uh, listen up, come with questions. Um, but, uh, but, but honestly, um, I, the best advice I would ever give a player is this. Coaches don't build players. Players build players. It is completely on you. Coaches make sure you don't waste your time. So you have to put in the time, you have to put in the work, but Erica will make sure that that time is not squandered. Awesome. Jake, thank you so much. Emerson, thank you so much. May, thank you so much. Erica, thank you so much. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thanks, Jake. It was really great. We have to see you all again back in January so we can see these traces again. All right, we'll do a follow-up for sure. Awesome. I'll track. Happy do, Tuesday, do everybody. Can yeah, do a video with the resistance training on the pressure mat. That would be yes. so cool to see those verticals in, I'm in I'm real time. I'm going to do that. Definitely. Awesome. We want it. Cool. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Guys. Bye. Bye. Good job, girls. See ya. Thank yeah. you. Bye.